Hey, Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Welcome back uh, to Twitch Stream. I'm Gabe Hollenby, and I'm joined here by Dr. Pete hey, and everybody. Arun Welcome Gupta. Back. Arun Hello. is AWS's principal open source technologist, and he's here today to talk to us about containers on AWS and specifically about running Kubernetes and our new 8KS service. Now, before we get into that, I just want to remind the viewers on Twitch, if you have any questions, our moderators are standing by, so please ask away, and we'll try and get that relayed up to us on the stage so we can answer your question. Cool. So, we announced uh, EKS at reInvent uh, this last year. Can you tell us a little bit more about what EKS is? Absolutely. EKS is a name for our managed Kubernetes service. And essentially what it means is elastic container service for Kubernetes. Okay. And that's what it is. Um, what it gives you is a managed control plane. Um, in the terms of managed control plane, you get an API server. You get a controller, you get a scheduler, all those components of master, which are the stateless components of the master, you get all of that. And then you also get the state uh, full part of the uh, API server, which is the etcd server. Okay. So when you ask for, okay, create a Kubernetes cluster for me, we automatically provision uh, three master and three etcd servers for you behind the scenes. So you get a highly available managed Kubernetes cluster. That's nice. So you just go to a console, say create a cluster, you get a cluster. And of course, you can do that using AWS CLI as well. OK. And before we talk a little bit more about Kubernetes, I wanted to ask you about your shirt. Exactly. The Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Why are you wearing the shirt today? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, I uh, funny, today is my one year anniversary at Amazon. Awesome. Woo! So I'm super excited. I'm super excited. So that's a lot of fun. Now. When I joined uh, AWS, my first question was, you know, Cloud Native Computing Foundation is a foundation which teaches people on how to build cloud native applications. Yeah. Now, this term has caught up recently only, yeah. but if you look at the origins of AWS, we have been working with our customers to build these cloud native applications for the longest time. Yeah. So my first question was, why aren't we part of CNCF? And my manager said, Adrian Cockcroft, who was sort of the biggest AWS evangelist yeah, right. before he joined AWS, he says, okay, that is your job now. <laughs> yeah, he's just an open source, right? So, so now you got the job that you were asking about. Exactly. Yeah. Wasn't so, on Amazon, right? Right, yeah. right. Well, that's the way it, it works yeah, at Amazon. Work. No, it's working that's backwards. So then um, he says, okay, now make it happen. So we kind of continued, went through the paperwork. And literally four months after I joined Amazon, we joined Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Nice. So Adrian and myself, we are the board representatives of AWS. Okay. And we work to make sure that our customers' interests are preserved over there. We hear their feedback, we bring it back into our services, and vice versa. Sweet. Cool. So, so Aaron, tell us, uh, what are the key benefits of EKS? Now, tell me the why I should actually use the service. Yeah, I mean, if you look at how Kubernetes can be uh, started on an AWS yeah, today. You can slice it and dice it in so many different there ways. There are like 20 different ways. Yeah, exactly. And as a matter of fact, if you look at it, the recent CNCF survey shows that 57% of Kubernetes runs on AWS. That's a lot. That's so, a and this is purely organic. Yeah. You know, we haven't done anything at we all. They haven't touched them, they're just doing it themselves. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and this is like all, you know, using COPS-based cluster, Juju, you know, whatever right. comes to your name. If you go to kubernetes-aws.io, right. you'll see the variety of ways in which Kubernetes can be started. It's confusing, right? So how, Pretty confusing. Do I, how do I do well, it? Well, that's one part of it. Yeah. Right, that's one part of it. The second part of it is when you are configuring a Kubernetes cluster on AWS, should my etcd be with the master? Right. Um, how big my master instance should be? The Kubernetes documentation also defines the bands. Like if the number of pods in your cluster are between Increase. such and such number, yeah. then your instance type should be this. Right. Okay. And those bands are pretty narrow. So, and then I don't know if I'm right. following the right practices. And there's multi-AZ implications. Exactly. All that other stuff, there's a lot right? to get right. Exactly. Yeah, so, are high. Right. Yeah. So this is an undifferentiated heavy lifting that our customers have been doing so far. Yep. And again, Amazon is a very customer-centric company. That's right. 90 to 95% of our roadmap is by customer demand. Yeah. So customer says, run Kubernetes for me. This is an undifferentiated heavy Good lifting. Thing. I don't want to focus on this. I want to build my application. Right. I want to reinvent. I want to innovate. Yeah. So make it happen for me. So it's purely customer awesome. driven. Okay. So you're basically helping everybody to get bootstrapped, hit the ground running, and get the jobs executed. Correct. Perfect. Correct. So it sounds pretty easy to get started with, but it also sounds a little similar to ECS, which was our existing container service. Can you tell me when would I use ECS, when would I use EKS? Yeah, totally. So ECS is our elastic container service. If we go back in history a little bit, 
ECS was launched in 2014. Okay. There mm -hmm. was no Kubernetes at that That's point right. of time, no right. public knowledge at least, okay? So one of the main things that our customers were asking was that Docker is pretty popular, yeah. we want to run Docker containers, and we want to run them at scale. How do we do that? That's the main reason ECS was, that was launched. Our response. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. We also launched uh, Elastic Container Registry afterwards, mm -hmm. you know, just because they wanted to host on, a, on something Docker registry. Sure. So, all right. So we kind of built up on top of that. If you look at ECS today, we have 100,000 plus you know, clusters that are running on ECS. Wow. In any given week, there are hundreds of millions of containers that are launched on an ECS cluster very easily. That's a lot. There is a reason why services like SageMaker, mm -hmm. Batch, Code Commit are built on top of ECS because they love the native deep integration into different AWS services. Okay. There are reasons why uh, customers love running on ECS because it's PCI compliant, it's sure. HIPAA compliance. That compliance matters to our customers. That's right. And if it matters to our customers, it matters to us. Yeah. So I think that's one of the main reasons customers love to run on ECS. Now, if you let's say if you do have an open source angle yeah. where you want to run you know, an open source solution mm -hmm. for whatever reason, okay. um, or you want to run something which is on premises as well as in the cloud, wow. or you want to run a multi cloud for whatever reason, then that's the reason that mm -hmm. you may go the Kubernetes route yep. because EKS kind of gives you a managed Kubernetes cluster. Whatever your skill set is on the on-premise, you can apply the exact same concepts in, in the, the cloud. cloud, so you can literally burst into the cloud. It's a great evolution journey, right? It's exactly. a migration story, it's a great path, it's low, lower risk because folks have right. actually been already doing it themselves, yep. and we're just helping them along the way. Okay. Correct. Now, the other part to also understand is, ECS is using CNI plugin, okay. uh -huh. and EKS is also using a CNI plugin. Okay. So, so there so is what's, a what's CNI for those other viewers that aren't familiar Correct. with that Thank terminology? You, <laughs> <laughs> well, we sometimes live too close to the wire, oh, we so we forget we that. Do. So CNI is Container Networking Interface, which defines a standard way you know, containers should talk do the network other, yeah. to okay. talk to each other. So they both use com uh, CNI interfaces, mm -hmm. so there is a bit of a commonality in that okay. sense. Cool, and I know we also have a service called Fargate, or maybe it's not a service. Can you clear up when would I use Fargate versus EKS? Yeah, what's the difference? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's ECS as, uh, is a service. Right. EKS is a service. Right. Fargate is a technology on top of ECS. It's not a service. Okay. Right. And so if you think about ECS concepts a little bit, ECS says create a cluster, bring your EC2 instances into the cluster. Right. So you got that going. But why should I bring EC2 instances into the cluster? You know, like, why do I have to manage it? Why do I have to manage it? That's exactly the problem Fargate brings you. Okay. Fargate says, okay, you like the task defs, which is the ECS concept on how yeah. you define a container. Bring your task defs, deploy it into an ECS cluster, no EC2 instance is required. Okay. So you don't need to manage cluster, none of that is required. You just bring your task defs, we auto-manage it for you. So the it's more of an implementation detail that I don't really need to concern myself with, probably. Exactly, okay. because you know, if, you, if your services need to scale, yep. it'll automatically yeah. scale. So it's like serverless for your containers, right? Yeah, it's serverless okay. containers, okay. exactly. So Perfect. my recommendation cool. would be, if you're starting with ECS today, yeah. definitely look at the Fargate route first. And if you need more knobs and controls, for example, then say, you know what, I'm looking at full-blown ECS. Now, one of the things I will also recommend is take a look at the Fargate CLI okay. that we're doing in the open source right, right. that is built by one of our solution architects. It really provides a simple abstraction on how you can easily get started with Fargate. Okay, so we talked about choice, quite a bit of choice. Mm. So about operating systems. I know a lot of folks are hung up on what OS is supporting the containers. So what can they bring in terms of bringing around OS? Do they use us? Can you demystify that for our listeners and our, and our, and our viewers? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if you are using the managed uh, service, then of course on the managed service, you don't have to worry about it on the control plane side of it. What is the operating system? Because we manage to take care of it for you. Sure. So that's not a problem. Okay. Now, because in EKS, mm -hmm. the model is very much like ECS, yeah. where you bring your EC2 instances into the cluster. Yeah. So we're going to provide you a predefined army. And okay. in that army, it's going to be Amazon Linux based. And because Was it's it Amazon Linux 2, cool. exactly. So yeah. it's Amazon okay. Linux 2 based. And we're also going to provide the Packer scripts on how those armies are built. Okay. So the advantage of that is now, if you want to bring your own operating I system, can. If you want to BYOS, cool. then you bring your operating system, use those Packer scripts, nice. pack the components like Docker, nice. Kubelet, that ever needs to be packed, yep. and then connect them to the cluster. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's great. Right. Cool. Uh, before we continue, uh, we just had one of our viewers say hello, ERS 2006. Hello back to you, and thanks hello. for saying hi. I appreciate that. Uh, so, 
You talked about OS and versions, but what about Kubernetes itself? What versions of Kubernetes will we support? And what about cluster upgrades? Right. Yeah. So if you look at Kubernetes, the version of Kubernetes is major dot minor dot patch. Yeah. So okay. if I look at say one nine two, hmm. one is a major, nine is a minor, and two is a patch. It's semver. Exactly. It's semantic versioning. Yeah, it's a very okay. semantic versioning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the point being, now if you have that versioning, we don't give you a choice between the patch versions. Okay. Because patch version typically is CVEs, bug fixes, security patches. Yeah, you shouldn't give me a choice on those yeah, because yeah, then yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll forget to upgrade. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Now we do give you a choice between the major and the minor version. Sure. And the way we give you a choice is. It could be automatic upgrade, okay. in which case you just select a checkbox. My choice is I, I want Amazon to AWS to upgrade. Whenever you take it's care right of now. it for me whenever yeah. it's a good time. Okay. Or let's say if you have some things running and you want to have a better control on it, yeah. then you can say I will manually upgrade it. Got it. So that's an important part to understand. Now, either way, the upgrade is done in a rolling fashion, uh -huh. and what that means is you, there is no downtime in the cluster. Yeah. So it just keeps going. Exactly. Right. Now the important part so you is you shouldn't be seeing anything disappear. No. As we take things off, things will be brought back up online. Exactly. Kind of. That's an important part of it. Now, um, the one of the key things that we need to understand is after the rolling upgrade is done, uh -huh. then your entire cluster is upgraded. So that's on the managed side of it. Yep. But on the worker side of it, we're going to provide you cloud formation scripts or other concepts by which you will still be responsible for upgrading your own and worker that, instances. That makes sense. Got it. Right. Very cool. So, so quite often, whenever we launch a service, like EKS in this case, um, we often have integration into other services for telemetry, how these are performing, you know, throughput. What's the story around EKS and our integration parts? Our customers love that, you know, yeah. the integration with all the different add, services. Right? More heavy lifting taken away from, <laughs> right. from them doing it, we right. help them out. Right. So now, as I said, we use AWS CLI to create a cluster. Right. So we say AWS CLI, yeah. then the EKS is a subcommand, and then yeah. we could say create cluster. Correct. So all of those commands are logged into CloudTrail for auditability. Right. So that's all there. Anything that goes into kubectl, which is on the API server, yeah, yeah. is logged into CloudWatch. Got it. So you can start putting over there. Now, we are in no way giving you any opinionated approach. It's yeah. all about choices, once again. Of course. That we are, we are not saying that you should run this logging framework or this monitoring framework. Mm -hmm. So on the worker nodes are fully in your control. Got it. So let's say if you want to run something like EFC, you know, which yeah, is yeah. Elastic Stack, Elastic Search, Fluentd, Kibana. Correct. If you want to run that, you are more than welcome to run that as a daemon set on your worker nodes, and that is completely up to you. So that's yeah. one part of it. So you're already committed to something on premises or elsewhere. Correct. You can continue to use it, but also get the value add of the deeper integration Correct. with CloudWatch. Correct. Correct. Cloud now, trial. if you look at raw upstream Kubernetes, uh -huh. there you can say for a service manifest, you can say type colon load balancer. Right. And if you do type colon load balancer, that will spin up an elastic load balancer for you. Okay. One of the community members at that time added support for an annotation in the service manifest, which will generate a network load balancer, so which we announced last year. Cool. So you just put an annotation on the service manifest, and it will spin up an NLB for you. Excellent. Now, that community member happens to work in the EKS team now. <laughs> okay. So send us is a pull request. Is that how you get a job? Well, send us a, pull re send us a pull request and be part of EKS team. So that is always exciting. But it's virtually, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. and then of course we have integration with where you can use IAM for authentication to the cluster. We'll provide integration with private link. And as the services evolve, definitely more integration with Perfect. different services. Perfect. Okay, and what about cluster federation? What types of cluster federation will be supported? Yeah, cluster federation is an alpha feature. Okay. So right. in EKS, we're only going to support beta and the GA features of Kubernetes itself. All right. Um, so our recommendation is really to use smaller, smaller clusters that are across multiple availability zones and front end it with a deployment pipeline. Could be code pipeline or whatever your favorite deployment yeah. tool is, and then use federation for that. Because that gives you because that gives you high availability, resiliency, and latency, low latency as well. Okay. okay. So I only briefly touched upon, you know, opinionation and giving flexibility and freedom to a customer. So what add-ons do we support? Well, what, what could customers actually bring as an add-on? There's lots of them around. Uh, what's supported, what's not, what's coming? Yeah. So the, because it's a managed service, uh -huh. so we're going to take an opinionated approach. So the, currently, the list of add-ons that we are looking at is Cube DNS, right. which allows okay. you to do DNS resolution okay. between different services. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you a Cube dashboard, which is, again, the dashboard up in the upstream, right. and that's going to be available to you. And we are lo looking at customer feedback on what add-ons they would like us to support for that. Right. So that list is continuing to evolve. Okay. So let us know, guys, what I need to put in there to support your add-ons. Okay, and what about Helm? Yeah, help, help support, uh, we are definitely looking at that because that seems to be the de facto way right. by which customers deploy applications. Now, that does require a bit of a work. 
one of the core tenets of the EKS service is 100% upstream support. So we have already integrated client Go support, okay. which allows authentication for Helm to work. And we are working with the Heptio folks, which are a very good partner for ours, on how that needs to kind of all package up together. But once that support is all integrated, then by the time EKS goes GA, yep. Helm should be working for you as well. OK, now that's a good thing to maybe wrap up on. GA means generally available. GA right which generally right available. now, it's in a limited preview release. Correct. So when we announced at uh, reInvent, it was in limited preview. That's yep. what it is right now. Yep. And GA means it's generally available. That means anybody can go sign up for the surveys and use it. So, so how do we sign exactly. up? Exactly. So how do yeah. we sign up? Well, that's the key like question. Yeah. Uh, go to aws.amazon.com slash EKS, and that is your link. And there it says exactly sign up for a limited preview. And I would recommend, you know, talk to your account managers, talk to your solution technical account managers, yeah. solution architects. Yeah. That's the key part of it. Help them bubble up the request. Yeah. And this is Sydney, so you know, if you want you know AKS in the Sydney region, well, yeah. right now <laughs> it is only in US West too. So if you want this in Sydney region, make sure your request bubbles up because the more we hear from customers, right. the easier it allows yeah. us to prioritize. All right, that, that's a plug for the Aussies. So guys, make sure you let your solution architects, your account teams know, to let Arun know that's right. <laughs> that you'd like to have EKAs here in Sydney. And Sydney's been a really great local region for early access to a lot of things. So um, we're super excited because we do have a lot of Aussie customers already using EKAs, right. as you probably already know. Oh yeah, I mean, there's a lot of excitement around Kubernetes here. Oh yeah. I've been talking to a lot of customers already. So, very exciting times. Indeed. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Once again, we've got Arun Gupta joining us today. Thank you for your participation. Dr. Pete, I'm Gabe Hollenby, signing off for now. See you again. Thank Bye. you. Bye, guys.